Yeah. Hi, um, I'm Linda Draper from Wayne State University. Hello, Linda. You and I have worked together. Um, I'm also present coordinator for Michigan Council Local. And so um, I use Medline Plus almost exclusively in Michigan mm -hmm. when I'm looking for the resources. Um, and I, I know that uh, health literacy is addressed in uh, Medline Plus. Have you found that many of the resources that you do refer to outside of maybe specifically the local ones are in Medline Plus? Um, yeah, oh yeah, definitely. In fact, we're in Medline Plus. This is in Medline Plus. And then, and then the other question is, the ones that are local, um, I know you and I have talked a little bit about the literacy issue. If there is a health uh, component, then those um, links certainly could be in um, uh, Michigan Health Go Local. Mm -hmm. So if they're related specifically <coughs> to Michigan and they're related to health, they could also be in mm -hmm. our, our database. Yeah. And I would certainly like to know about those resources. Okay. We'll keep that in mind. Um, of course, with the internet, everything is getting to be so, you know, non-specific in terms of locality. Right. You know. Some things are. Yeah. Rushed. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oops. Sorry, sir. Um, Patsy, I've been thinking a lot about the fact that your one of your conclusions was, you know, we went after clinics, we found we could cooperate, but. I think you're so busy in the clinic that it was hard to get staff attention. So mm -hmm. I was trying to think, well, where is the intervention point for people who work in, in uh, these clinics? And mm -hmm. of course, there are nurses, there are doctors, there are other providers. And I was trying to think, most of them are probably using pre-made materials already, and they have a routine. Mm -hmm. So where do they actually go and uh, create materials? For mm -hmm. example, do the nurses at a professional meeting engage the very ideas that you're bringing up for them, and similarly for doctors. So mm -hmm. after your work with the clinics, are, is there another place you might go to uh, train various of the provider groups with the resources mm -hmm. that you've got? Well, some of the links under um, health provider training resources would be helpful. But there are a couple of really um, interesting movements, and one of them is plain language, which is has a link on, it's a government link. You could just type in plain language and probably find it. And there are a lot of people training people to do those kinds of things. I went to an institute last spring, um, and the people there were nurses, physicians, public health people, people who worked for co various counties and so forth, and they had come there to learn actually how to write those things. And when we taught the class, I didn't forget what you said. You know, when we taught the class downstairs or over here in our classroom, that's what the people who would come to our class really wanted. They didn't really want to hear, oh, we have a literacy issue. You know, oh, we need to do this. They wanted somebody to come in and teach them how to do plain language writing. And I think that's going on a lot. Our nurses are writing a lot of the materials. And I think they're doing, you know, what they can with the time and skill they have, but it's a huge problem. Patient education always is a really big challenge. And I think to reach the clinic setting, you're also looking at continuing education modules and programs mm -hmm. for nurses as well as physicians. Um, with the oral health and type 2 diabetes program that we're working on, we were specifically focused on patient provider communication and how to better communicate with your patient about that bi-directional relationship. And some of the participants in the study that informed that um, communication component were very specific in telling us, talk to me very using plain language. How can I change my behaviors if I don't understand what you're saying? And I think a lot of those continuing education programs are specifically targeting that one-on-one -on -one communication with the patient. It really is a matter, it's an issue of communication. That's what it definitely comes down to. And I think you're going to see more and more um, cross-pollination at a lot of these conferences because there are more and more conferences and you get just such an interesting mix of people like today. Other questions? We're almost out of time.
Yeah. I, did, I came in late, so I don't know, forgive me if you've already addressed this. It has to do with the uh, assessment of health literacy and whether uh, your take on like trying to test each individual versus using the universal precautions model. The universal precautions model. I'm not familiar with that. I, I the notion of that is the same as for like hand washing, that we use certain precautions for all patients Irregardless oh, okay, of yeah, risk. yeah, okay. So that instead of trying to test, I spent a lot of resources mm -hmm. into testing every right. single patient in the healthcare system, you would work more on the interventions and get, mm -hmm. um, kind of create a better standard yeah. for us. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I think in research, research they're obligated to somehow document particular levels and, and have a way to try to measure improvement. But I think in the day-to-day -day setting in the clinic, it's very informal. It's, it, is, it should be a universal precaution kind of thing. Uh, in fact, one of the physicians where we went actually talked about giving papers to, to the patients upside down. They, people have a lot of little tricks they use in the clinics to try to pick up on these things. And I think trying to communicate well with everybody is really where it's at.